Happy Harvick is back to doing what he does best. Jimmy Johnson's season somehow goes from bad to even worse. And we got a lot of exciting underdog finishes today to talk about from Michigan. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove. Couple things might look completely different right here. For one, I'm not in my normal studio. This is not a green screen. I'm in a hotel room uh, near Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Mobile? I think it's Mobile, Alabama. I should ask Bubba Wallace. I think he's from here. Anyway, I'm doing a lot of traveling this week leading up to the Bristol night race this next weekend, which I'm super excited for. In case you missed it, I announced it yesterday, but I, along with several other NASCAR YouTube personalities you might be aware of, are gonna be doing a meetup at Bristol Motor Speedway outside the track at the NASCAR pole position tent the day of the race, August 17th at noon. So if you're gonna be at Bristol, try to get there early in the day. You have a chance to meet a whole bunch of us, take pictures, talk about racing, whatever you wanna do. We'll all be out, be out there uh, hanging out. So I'm looking forward to seeing a whole bunch of the Groovy gang in attendance. But yeah, we have a lot to talk about from Michigan here. I watched this race basically in the car on my phone. I had the NBA, NBC Sports app, spotty internet, driving through Louisiana, Mississippi, kind of spotty internet, spotty weather in some places, but I made it, I made it through. I was able to watch about 75% of the race, was able to keep track of all of it on social media, leaderboards and everything. So I have a pretty good idea of what happened today and there are a lot of playoff implications we have to talk about. Before I get too far into it, I do want to shout out a new sponsor for Out of the Groove, Joe's Hand Cleaner. Check this out, sent me some samples, I got the hat and everything. Thank you to Joe's Hand Cleaner for sponsoring Out of the Groove. All right, but let's get to talking about this race. We gotta go through the top finishers, we gotta look at the point standings, a special segment this week, and then we got the Groovy Gauge. Uh, let's just start by looking at the top finishers. This might be a little abbreviated because I want to spend a lot of time talking about the point standings and stuff in a minute. So Kevin Harvick got the win. It's his second win of the season. The closer does it yet again. A uh, huge rim, huge momentum booster. This is his second win now in less than a month. We spent pretty much the whole first half of the year wondering what was up with Kevin Harvick, why he wasn't winning races. Here he is, he's shown up. Stuart House Racing still looks kind of iffy, but Harvick does not. Uh, Ford always does well at Michigan. They always want to perform well because there's a lot of Ford people. This is kind of a Ford home race of, of sorts. Uh, so Kevin Harvick, again, strong performance, got the win, saved enough fuel, had the best car it looked like in the final run. Uh, Great win for him. Great, more momentum, more bonus points going into the playoffs. He's starting to look like an actual championship contender again, which is, I think, what we expected coming into this season. Denny Hamlin, another strong second place finish. You know, of everyone in the Cup Series today, I think Denny Hamlin, many people will agree, is probably the best driver to not have a Cup Series championship. At least the best veteran driver. There's some good young guys, sure, they're going to have their chances, but Hamlin's had his shots, has come close a few times, uh, but has not ever won a championship. This year is looking like maybe his best chance since... I don't know, maybe since like 2010. Another good day for him. Kyle Larson comes home a strong third. He had a great run past like a dozen cars on that final green flag set of the race. Uh, so great rebound for Kyle Larson there. Solid finish for him. Daniel Suarez also gets a top five. I'll talk about the points in a minute. Huge top five there for Daniel Suarez at one of his better tracks. I almost skipped Truex there. Uh, ended up winning stage one after starting in the rear, failing post or pre-race inspection. I'll talk about that more in a minute. That was extremely impressive. But Martin Truex Jr., another very solid, consistent day. Toyota looked really strong early in this race. Hamlin was good. Truex was good. Kyle Busch even won stage two. But then Toyota kind of faded a little bit. They still, you know, top fives are still really good, but they kind of faded, and Penske and Ford kind of took over, and that's why Ford, Stuart Haas Ford, uh, ended up winning the race, ultimately. So it was kind of an interesting race how the first half was, you know, some people dominated, second half others dominated. Track must have changed or something happened. Some people didn't catch up to the track the way others did. Some other notable finishes there. Seventh place for Ryan Priest. Awesome for uh, the Rookie of the Year contender. Really cool for JTG Doherty to continue to have some success. Chris Buescher did not have a great finish in this race, uh, but uh, he did run really well. Unfortunately, he ran out of gas at the end. Uh, so so he did not get the top 10 he probably deserved, but great day for JTG Doherty overall. Byron Elliott and Alex Bowman there sneak into the top 10 for Hendrick Motorsports, so I'll talk about Jimmy in a second, but it was not a total wash uh, for Hendrick. Ty Dillon, I'll give him a shout out, 11th place. I didn't even see him up there like that high. Great for him, 11th place for Ty Dillon is an awesome day. Ryan Newman, another good points day for him, 12th, very important given that he came into this race tied for 16th on the cut line. Needs to get those consistent Newman type days to, to stay relevant. Austin Dillon, good rebound given he had to start in the rear after uh, they failed post qualifying inspection. He lost his qualifying position, started in the back, got spun by Almarola when Almarola lost control and took out both RCR cars. Austin Dillon with a solid rebound. And Busher, I mentioned him a second ago, his finish actually wasn't as bad as I originally thought. 14th place, not too bad running for running out of gas on the last lap, but he should have had a top 10. Chris Busher, man, he should have had a top 10. He's been so consistent this year. I love it. Joey Logano finished 17th. Uh, he was leading in that final run, but all three Penske cars that were sniffing in the lead there, Joey Logano, Brad Kozlowski, and Ryan Blaney all ended up either having to pit or ended up running out of gas. They played the fuel strategy and lost 
uh, and that cost them all good finishes. So you see Logano there, 17th. Keselowski ended up 19th, and Blaney was 24th, I believe. So not great for them. Uh, Eric Jones finishes 18th. Not a great finish. He had a good stage. I think stage two, he finished fifth. So got some important points. We'll look at the point standings here in a second because... Uh, a lot changed. A lot, a lot has changed. A few more notable finishers here. Uh, Kurt Busch ran out of gas at the end. He finished 23rd despite having a pretty solid car for much of the day. Uh, Eric Almirola ended up 33rd. Jimmy Johnson or put himself on the wall early on in this thing. Ended up a few laps down pretty much at the very start of the race. Uh, he ended up finishing 34th. And then Clint Boyer ended up dead last in 37th after he wrecked on a restart. Uh, Jimmy Johnson and Clint Boyer, the two guys who were the last two in coming into this race. 15th and 16th on the grid was Clint Boyer and Jimmy Johnson. They both wrecked in this race. So let's go to the point standings because things have changed dramatically. If we look at the playoff bubble here, Blaney, Almirola, Byron, Larson, Jones. I mean, Jones at this point, 70 points up, probably safe. Really now we're focusing on 15th through 18th. Ryan Newman, plus 16, that consistent finish. Gets him 16 points above the cushion thanks to Johnson's struggles. Clint Boyer, he's lucky in my opinion to still be in the top 16 after wrecking on a restart. Uh, he's only six points up though. Daniel Suarez with that top five is now only six points out. You know, a week ago we thought Suarez might be in trouble, but just goes to show you how fast things can change. A really good day for Suarez and a really bad day for Jimmy Johnson and Clint Boyer has Daniel Suarez right back there Full on in contention. Jimmy is now minus 12, and then Paul Menard minus 53, and Chris Buescher has snuck into the top 20 now. He is 73 points back. Those consistent finishes, man. Don't sleep on Chris Buescher. I'm just saying, I mean, 73 points. He's probably gonna have to get a win, but I'm, I don't know. He has won before, and I think he's running better now than he did when he won in 2016 on the rain short race, so don't rule out Chris Buescher. But looking at that playoff grid, I know Jimmy Johnson, he made headlines after last week's race at Martin uh, Watkins Glen for all the wrong reasons, got into it with Ryan Blaney, war of words that took now a week later, they argued yesterday, apparently they settled it last night or the, earlier this weekend over beers, apparently they're a little bit more on the same terms again, but it's been a wild week for Jimmy Johnson, and I think he needed a solid day at Michigan here, a track that I think Jimmy Johnson expected to have a solid day, Michigan's not a particularly chaotic track, you know, you don't expect to wreck on that 10 or whatever he did. But Jimmy Johnson, just another classic case of why he's not doing as well these days as he was at his peak. He just isn't able to maintain the same level of focus, the same level of consistency that we're used to seeing. All that really happened there is he just lost focus and hit the wall. I mean, the cars probably got tight on him and he just didn't expect it or wasn't anticipating it, got up in the sticky stuff. He took the blame for it on Twitter afterwards. Uh, but that's just, you know, Jimmy Johnson losing focus, something he didn't do very often when he was winning those seven championships, but he's doing it a lot now. So uh, it's just it's just further evidence that Jimmy Johnson's still good, still a very good driver, and obviously one of the greatest all time, but he doesn't have it anymore. He's not a championship driver anymore, in my opinion, and it, this is just another example. He's just he's just losing a little bit. Can't blame him. Everyone, he's in his mid-40s now. Everyone starts to lose a little bit. Tony Stewart wasn't winning races consistently in his mid-40s. Jeff Gordon was not winning races consistently in his mid-40s. Matt Kenseth was not winning races consistently in his mid-40s. Jimmy Johnson. Johnson's not going to win races consistently in his mid-40s, so can't fault him entirely for it. I'm just saying it's further evidence that he is slipping a little bit. Clint Boyer's had just an awful summer, just a really bad handful of months here. Uh, I'm honestly starting to get skeptical. I don't. I, I thought it'd be really hard for a veteran driver and Stuart Haas equipment to miss the playoffs, but Clint Boyer, man, he's doing everything in his power to miss the playoffs the way he's been driving. And this one was just another mistake on a restart. Came down in front of Menard. Maybe Menard drove into him a little bit. Maybe you can blame Menard somewhat, but I don't know. It looked like Boyer just putting himself in a bad spot on a restart and losing it. I don't know what to tell you there. It's, it's looking more and more likely that Newman's going to make the playoffs in Roush equipment. And now even Daniel Suarez could sneak his way in. And Daniel Suarez, I expected him to make the playoffs at the beginning of this year, but the way he's been running uh, in the summer especially, I kind of started to lose those hopes. He's right back then there. It's, it's, there's too much to react to. Every week it's changing like crazy. Uh, we'll see what happens, but it's, it's wild. Now I want to highlight a few very important performances that I was very impressed by that had major points implications in some cases. Uh, this is a new segment sponsored by Joe's Hand Cleaner. Cleaning up the mess. <laughs> So which drivers managed to clean up their mess today? Well, I think we should start, obviously, with the winner, Kevin Harvick. Early on in this race, Kevin Harvick actually had a flat tire under green, but he caught it. He noticed he had a flat tire, managed to get on a pit road without issue, didn't even lose a lap, and that kept him in contention. So given that he lost all that track position early on in this race, and we hear constantly with this aero package at these big tracks, track position can be very important. Uh, I, that's impressive that, Ke that Harvick was able to work his way back through this race, work the strategy right, get back to the front, 
and win the race. Ultimately, that is cleaning up your mess when you have a messy beginning to a race. Now, another driver with huge points implications, Kyle Larson. Early on in this race, first set of green flag pit stops, he got caught speeding. And similar to Kevin Harvick, lost all his track position. Stay on the lead lap, but lost all his track position. Now, Larson, though, is right there on that playoff bubble. Remember, he was 14th in points coming into today, didn't have a huge cushion. This could have been catastrophic, but he bounced back and managed to finish third in the race, as we saw earlier. Clutch performance, very impressive comeback from Kyle Larson and that team. Now another driver who was able to wipe away some of his troubles with some Joe's hand cleaner wipes was Martin Truex Jr. He failed pre-race inspection, shockingly, and had lost his starting spot, had an engineer ejected from the track, but despite starting in the back, despite it being hard to pass, despite track position being key, he drove his way up from 37th into the top five and ultimately into the lead in one stage. He won stage one. Huge for him, a huge important playoff point for Martin Truex Jr. He managed to end up finishing fourth in the race. So what a comeback given how bad this race could have gone given how horrible the morning started. So very impressive performance by Martin Truex Jr. and all those other drivers I just named. Did a great job cleaning up their mess today. And again, thank you a ton to Joe's Hand Clear for sponsoring Out of the Groove. They're a family owned company made in the USA, Oklahoma specifically, and they sponsor a lot of racetracks in the Oklahoma area, including the Chili Bowl. They make this waterless hand Hand cleaner here. They also sent me these cleaning wipes, which smell like wild cherry candy. You can get their stuff at O'Reilly, Fastenal, and Parts Plus. Big thank you again to Joe's Hand Cleaner for sponsoring Out of the Groove. Couldn't do this without great partners like them. All right, so we've talked about everything except the racing itself. Now I saved this for last for a reason. One, because we've got my groovy gauge here. <sighs> Followed me all the way to Alabama. How about that? Uh, but yeah, we have to talk about Michigan. This is the second trip to Michigan this year. And the first Michigan race back in June, I thought was okay. I think I gave it a 70%. I thought the racing throughout the pack with the way the draft worked and everything, I thought was really fun to watch. The only problem with that race was that nobody could pass Joey Logano. Now, part of that, I think, was just because Joey Logano had that good of a race car, but still it left a bad taste in my mouth when you saw these guys right on his bumper, but unable to pass him for 200 laps. So to try and fix that problem, NASCAR added a grip strip in the outer groove of Michigan, both the turns one and two and three and four, all the way up to the wall, big dark grip patch. You didn't see a whole lot of drivers go all the way up there. You saw a lot of people kind of run their right sides on it a little bit, dip their toe into it, so to speak. Uh, but what it helped create was multi-groove racing, which is what made Michigan great way back in the day before the most recent repave and what I think can help make Michigan great uh, in the modern day. And so the big thing I was watching in this race is could people pass the leader? And yep, they could. Was it because of the PJ1? Maybe a little bit. I personally think it was mostly because Joey Logano didn't have a dominant car. And I think there's, like we talked about a second ago, the Toyotas looked fast earlier, but then they kind of fell behind and the Fords caught up and were faster at the end of the race. So it kind of was constantly changing who was running good. So there was always a better car trying to pass the leader. But I mean, in stage one, you saw Denny Hamlin go up and pass Brad Keselowski for the lead. Uh, you saw Truex and Hamlin actually exchange the lead a couple times uh, late in that stage. And then ultimately on the final run, Kevin Harvick was able to go right up and pass Joey Logano uh, all by himself. So ultimately you were able to pass the leader in this race was the PJ one. Was that the added, was that the difference maker? I don't know. But one thing that was the biggest problem with June's race was that you couldn't pass the leader. That was fixed for today's race. So I was very pleasantly surprised, kind of like what happened with Pocono. Pocono, earlier this year, you couldn't pass anybody. They added the PJ1, and Pocono last month was pretty good, pretty entertaining by Pocono standards. I think the same thing happened here to Michigan. Michigan, since the repave, has not been as good as it once was. But this was, I thought, a very fun race. You had the added you know, drama of fuel strategy down the stretch there. I know Harvick kind of you know, dominated the final stretch. He drove up there, and when he got in the lead, we knew fuel wasn't an issue for him for that. So that wasn't very dramatic. But behind him, the fuel situation with people actually running out the Penske cars, and Kurt Busch and Busher and everybody running out of fuel. That was dramatic. It had major points implications. That's why you had Brian Priest in the top 10 and Ty Dillon getting an 11th place finish. Like that was very interesting. That was very dramatic. Kept me on the edge of my seat. Kept me interested in the final stage. So ultimately, this was a good, solid NASCAR race. Not an amazing race, but a positive one. I'm going to give it, again, a 70% on the groovy gauge for very different reasons. First Michigan race this year, I just liked the racing from second on back. It was great for that. In that respect, the leader was not exciting to watch. This race... I will say the racing mid-pack didn't seem quite as exciting. I felt like people got spread out a little more than they were uh, than they did in June. But the racing up front was better in this in this year's or this week's race. Uh, you could actually pass the leader. We saw moves on restarts being made, uh, and then the fuel strategy at the end I thought was pretty interesting as well. So I think both races this year get 70% on my groovy gauge, but for different reasons. So let me know if you guys agree or disagree. That's what I think of this race, but I'm curious to know what you all think in the comments. I'm sure everyone down there is very, very opinionated. All right, so I don't want to make this episode too long. i got to upload this thing on Hope's Hell Wi-Fi, so we'll see how this works. <laughs> <laughs>
But thank you guys, as always, for watching. Remember to follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. I live tweet during the races, post a bunch of behind the scenes traveling stuff on Instagram, so check those out. Big thank you again to my Patreon supporters. Michael Harrison, at you as the stars, mentally effective. Cameron James, John Collins, Jason R. Long, Wesley Donaldson, Isaac Danson, Mika Suzuki, iFantasyRace.com, TheRacingInsiders.com, Matthew Kulopoulos, Pepe Luscious, Jeremy Conkling, Joey DiMicino, Emilio Garcia, Sky Racing Forums, Bryce Schumacher, and the rest of these incredible Patreon supporters. I couldn't do this without the support I get from you guys. I really, really appreciate so thank you all for going the extra mile. I'll be at Bristol later this week, and I'm super excited for that. And that would not be possible without the support I get from you all on Patreon. So thanks a ton, you guys. Tuesday of this week, in just a couple days, I'll be uploading an interview with Landon Castle. So look forward to that. Uh, and then I should have at least one more out of the groove later this week before Bristol. Again, if you're going to be at Bristol, get there Saturday noon, NASCAR pole position tent outside the track. I think it's outside turn one and two, kind of. Uh, I'll, I'll try to figure out exactly where it is and follow me on Twitter for updates. Uh, but come out, meet us, say hi. I'm uh, looking forward to all that. I'll be filming that. That whole weekend while I'm there so there's gonna be some crazy videos over the next uh, couple weeks but I hope you guys are excited for them because I sure am thank you guys for watching hope you enjoy the race today and I'll see you again very very soon bye everyone